Sail away Sail away As the cool air of February continues to blow through the Tampa, Florida area, Soulmates is in a hurry to get further south as we return to journey after a week back in North Carolina. First thing, we need to pick up our new Shelby. Suncoast Inflatables in Clearwater, Florida provided us with great service as we were able to transfer our new motor over to our new Shelby. And we made a deal with one of their young employees to begin his boating with our old Shelby. Always a great feeling to help others get on the water. After getting Shelby strapped into place, we left Boca Sica Bay and cruised into Tampa Bay, heading up to the Endeavor Boatyard for a few days to get a window leak fixed, and a few other items looked at from the manufacturer of our power cab. As always, cruising along and watching dolphins is a favorite. This mother and baby was the highlight of our morning. Soon we could see the Tampa skyline and Harley enjoyed soaking up the sun while the engines were running. She is such a sucker for an engine running and the warm sun shining down on her black coat. We were able to get tied up and docked before sunset and enjoy the evening tied to the dock and excited about getting some work done and having some new areas to explore. We spent the next five days at the boatyard. Along with the work that has been done, we were able to explore the areas back in the mangroves where we saw pink flamingos, enjoy the local wildlife. Well, much of that was the comings and goings at the getaway bar next door. The weekend was packed and we just sat on the deck and watched. Finally, we ventured over one weeknight to enjoy happy hour and get some great photos of Journey at the dock. On Valentine's Day, we headed back out into Tampa Bay and then under the Skyway Bridge. Harley was once again in her happy place and we were finally free from the dock and looking for some white sand. <laughs> we anchored out along Edmont Key just before the sun went down, and the next day we enjoyed some warm beach time. Harley was happy to run along the beach and explore. We tucked into the Manatee River for the night in order to catch up with my parents the next day before heading further south. After lunch with my parents in Palmetto at the River House Cafe, we picked up some supplies they had brought us and headed back out to Journey. Trying to get a jump start south, we pulled anchor headed down to Longboat Key just outside the Mar Vista restaurant. We didn't get a chance to eat there, but have heard it is the best. We had a nice evening and were able to get out again early so we could get in early to Sarasota and secure our first mooring ball for the night. The wind was picking up as we headed into the Sarasota mooring field, and I soon learned that I was not the one to pick up a mooring ball. So after finally securing ourselves to the mooring ball, we were able to drop Shelby and ready ourselves to head in to check in with Marina Jack. Next order of business was for Harley to enjoy some time off the boat. She enjoyed the park and stretching her legs and her ears enjoyed the wind. The winds were up while we were in Sarasota and Journey did some swinging, but the evening skyline around Sarasota was spectacular. With all the winds, we chose a window and left the mooring balls after a few days to head further south, taking in for the night around Siesta Key. Dee had just finished replacing the shower pump in the guest head and was ready to use it for the first time when the generator cut off by itself. We spent the evening figuring that one out. The impeller was shot and would need to be replaced, but thankfully we had that part on board. Next day we headed down and around Venice, Florida with Dee tucked into the garage changing the impeller. Other than having to work while we moved, he was able to make the change and the generator was happy again. We headed around Venice and into Port Charlotte, finding a little hurricane hole in Caya Costa for the night. This was a quiet, no rocking spot, and we enjoyed exploring Caya Costa and sleeping well. Time for some company on Journey. We headed up into Port Charlotte to pick up our friends Eddie and Joan and head out to Captiva and the South Seas Resort to celebrate their wedding anniversary. Our dock space was home to many manatees, which we enjoyed watching play in the marina. These creatures are very curious and without a care in the world. They always draw a crowd. 
After drinks by the pool, we crossed the street to watch the sunset on the beach, participating in the South Sea Sunset Ceremony. This is done by throwing a seashell into the ocean and making a wish, just as the sun drops below the water. It was a perfect end to a perfect evening. The next morning, we took a bus ride around Captiva, and Eddie and Dee secured some new sun hats. Then we headed back to move a little further south on Captiva to check out sunset at the Mucky Duck. We anchored near the Green Flash and was able to tie our dinghy at their dock and walk Oceanside to eat at the Mucky Duck and watch the sun go down. The Green Flash and the Mucky Duck have the same owners. We explored the Captiva Sanibel area the next day before heading back toward Cape Kroll to find an anchorage for the night to prepare for their departure and had our infamous dinghy ride over to the Boathouse Tiki Bar. If you want those details, I'm sure Eddie and John would love to share that story. It was a great adventure. After securing their Uber and waving bye to Eddie and Joan as they headed back to North Carolina, we set out down toward Marker Island with our first experience out in the Gulf since crossing in January. Now we were south and warmer and looking forward to enjoying some time in Naples with friends. We tucked into Gordon Pass for the night in among some very expensive homes and anchored with three other boats nearby. The next morning we headed down toward Marco Island and the Gulf was beautiful. We had been looking for an affordable marina in the area and stumbled across Port of the Islands Marina. We didn't know then that this would become a safe haven for journey during the coming hurricane season. Before heading in to Port of the Islands, which takes about an hour, something we didn't really know at the time, we spent a night along Panther Key. Panther Key is among the 10,000 Islands area in the Everglades. This was a place totally different from anywhere we had been and the quiet and lack of light pollution at night made the stars reach down and almost touch you. We enjoyed the evening here and a beautiful sunset. Next morning we headed in early to the marina. Upon arrival we were greeted with friendly faces and floating concrete docks. We heard the Irma stories and decided that first day that we wanted to see if they could accommodate us from April through September, October, and the answer was yes. It felt good to have that dilemma solved for the coming hurricane season. Port of the Islands would soon bring new friends and new wildlife. We all, including Harley, had to get used to the gators. Sail away. Sail away Sail away